In the summer of 2006, I was traveling in Europe. I remember visiting many great buildings and beautiful landmarks. But there is one that I remember as if I was there yesterday. La Alhambra, in Granada, Spain. I was amazed with the level of detail in the ornaments, the use of light and shadow, the symmetry. But years later, I discovered one thing that to me was absolutely mind-blowing. Many of the towers of La Alhambra were made of earth, specifically with a technique called rammed earth. Now, I know you're all familiar with buildings made of concrete, wood, steel, or stone. But have you experienced an earth building? Have you felt the texture, the smell, the sound? It smells fresh, like after a rainy day. It looks rough, but at the same time, calm, quiet, natural. So what is rammed earth? Here we have a small piece of rammed earth that we did a few weeks ago. And here we have some material to show you how it's done. This is a tiny version of form. And one, once it is assembled, you put earth into it. After that, you will compact it until it gets hard. So Ashir and Shay will try to finish this small piece of a wall, and we'll come back to them later. It can be really hard to understand the concept of rammed earth. Like once we were doing a workshop, it was in the middle of this square, and the guy came to us and asked, are you working with concrete? And when we said, no, this is rammed earth, he was completely surprised. And this is the feeling that we get in many of our workshops. People are skeptical in the beginning, and then they are surprised with the result. Maybe this is because rammed earth is a simple process. It's not easy to understand how earth can become so solid. Clay is the most important element in the earth mixture. Clay acts as a glue as it binds together sand and stone. While searching for the right earth to build, a rule of thumb is needed. You usually will have to have one-third clay and two-thirds silt, sand, and stone. The more I learned, sorry, the more I learned, the more fascinated I became with rammed earth. So when I came to Sweden to study my master's degree in architecture, I met these two guys, and we totally geeked out on earth. We went to, we went to a workshop in England, to learn the technique. But that wasn't enough. We wanted to learn more. So we started experimenting ourselves, wandering around the city, digging out earth like maniacs, trying to see what was in that earth, trying to see how thin could we build a wall before it broke. As we got more and more into rammed earth, people started to call us the earth guys, or in Swedish, Jud Gubar. Hmm? We quickly began receiving requests from others who also wanted to learn. And that's when Earth Lab was born. We started doing workshops, teaching other people, teaching ourselves. This has become a driving force in our mission to spread the love of rammed earth. Now, rammed earth is not a new technique. It's thousands of years old. It is believed that even today, one-third of the world population lives in Earth buildings. Yet, nobody's talking about this anymore, and we think it's important. Especially with growing concerns about climate change, diminishing resources. It's really common to hear about solutions like electric cars, higher efficiency, renewable energy. 
But not much is said about our building materials. 5% of the global man-made CO2 emissions come from the cement production. Up to 40% of solid waste comes from the building industry, as many of the materials we use today cannot be reused in their original forms. Earth, however, is circular. It can be broken down into its original form and even be reused. This is every environmental designer's dream. It has so much potential, but it's not even on the radar of architects and builders. We are not saying that Earth will solve all of our problems, or that all buildings should be built entirely of Earth. Our vision is that Earth becomes a choice in the palette of designers. Many people are not even aware that Earth is a choice. Like my parents, for example. They retired about two years ago. They wanted to move to the south of Mexico and build a house. So they trusted in me as an architect. And as you may imagine, I designed the whole thing out of Earth. So when I came with my first sketches and ideas, excitement, and showed them the, the drawings, I, I could feel in, in their faces they were scared. They were like, who's, who's going to build that? Who's going to build this? No se puede, David, that this can be done. Like, they were scared. So what we, what we decided to do is like, okay, we scaled down the, use, the usage of Earth. We designed a core of rammed earth, who is fully load-bearing and is holding a brick bolt. Around this core, we have different materials, like concrete and cement blocks. The reaction of the local contractors was the same as we have heard in Sweden. It's like, mm, this is not going to work. So we would travel down to Mexico and show them. We built these walls half a meter thick, and rammed earth is usually massive. It's heavy. This is in sense for structure, but this is also a benefit as a thermal mass. In Mexico, for example, when it's really hot outside, a rounder wall can cool down the indoor temperature. Now, I, I know what you might thinking as well. Okay, here is not Mexico. That's only good for southern climates. But the truth is, it also works in cold climates. We are actually testing this. This is a wall we are helping to build inside a straw bale house here in Sweden. The wall is oriented towards the south, so during the winter, the sun hits the wall. It warms it up, and during the night, it will release the heat. So the house will, last, will need less energy to stay warm. Rammed earth walls also help to create a healthy indoor environment, as they do not release any chemicals. They also regulate humidity, because they take up and release moisture throughout the day. There's other qualities with rammed earth, like the layers that you see. The owners of this house, they said that the layers, well, they gave them a, a calm feeling. And the layers aren't just for looks. They are a result of the process. The thickness of the layers are a result of the rammers you're using and the looks you want. Shea and Auschwitz are using manual rammers, for example. The small one is a detailed rammer for the edges, but in more industrialized projects, pneumatic or automatic rammers are used. The important thing when working with rammed earth is that each layer of loose earth should be compacted about half its original size. During our journey working with rammed earth, we have experienced many great buildings, and the one thing that is in common with all of them is that we can't take our hands off them. There is an honesty about the material, and this obsession has taken us to different places around the world. To Berlin, where we visited the Chapel of Reconciliation, this beautiful oval rammed earth structure. And even to China, to see the ancient Tulu, gigantic rammed earth structures. They have been standing there for centuries. We hope that through our work, we can help to remove the stigmas that have been associated with Earth, like it is for poor people or not durable. Many of the stigmas started when new products were developed during the Industrial Revolution, and they still remain. 
they still remain, but they are not true. As we have seen in the Alhambra and Tulu, Earth buildings can last for centuries. We aim to do this also through collaboration. By bringing people together and communities, we have discovered that rammed earth can be empowering. Earth is one of the most local building materials, as it comes directly from the building site or an area close by. We feel that earth is a puzzle or a piece in a, in a bigger puzzle. It doesn't have to be in the scale of a building. You can also do other things as well, like building fireplaces, candle holders, or even lamps. Seems like the ramming is finished. Or The form until now has been used as a tool to shape the earth. We are going to remove it and show the earth beneath. This is how a fresh... <laughs> this is how a fresh rammed earth wall looks like. It's a little bit dark in color, but it's strong enough to continue building on the top. You don't need to, the wall to be completely fully cured. Woo! So think about it. We built this cube. How could it become if we continued? A wall, a bench, a house? What could you envision? We need to be able to imagine something to be able to build it. But we do not know how the future will be. If we will have robot arms building our houses, or if the craft of building will come back, or maybe a combination of both. What we know is that building with Earth can help us to build that future. Now you have the power to imagine how that future might look like. So we hope that next time you want to build something, you take a look down the ground and ask, can I make this out of Earth? Thank you very much.